So today's episode of BizJet TV, I'm going to be answering the question, how much money should I be paying my private jet pilot? It's a question I get asked a lot. So we're going to address that today. We're going to look at where salaries are going and why. But before we get straight in to the episode, I encourage you to get yourself a copy of The Quantum Economy, my latest book. It's just out. Uh, you can click on the link below to get yourself a copy. 170 pages. What is the book about? It's about private jets, of course, but it's mainly about the economy, uh, where the economy is going. We talk about entrepreneurship, the emerging economies, technology, and why the private jet is going to be playing such an important role. In the book, I also tell the story of a number of entrepreneurs that have used the private jet as a business tool to build their business. And you'll actually see, you know, when people ask themselves the question, well, should I buy the jet first or build my business first or whatever, you understand that you really do need to get your private aircraft as soon as possible early in your entrepreneur game and what a lot of people are doing now is actually learning to fly buying a smaller airplane and building their hours up and experience and with a smaller plane and building their business at the same time while having fun flying the plane and as their business grows and as they grow as a pilot they buy a bigger airplane a faster airplane and they move along like that but you can also check the interview i did with um, rick hamilton lately his he did exactly that and, and you can check that out uh the link above or at the end of the video uh, you'll see that but anyway let's get into the uh, uh, question today which is how much should i pay my private jet pilot now uh, professional pilots magazine does a survey every year and asks around and asks pilots how much they're actually being paid uh, interestingly enough top end right now for an aviation department manager uh, that's flying like an airbus acj or boeing business jet uh, Falcon 7X uh, Global 7500. We're talking a close to about three hundred and twenty thousand dollars in pay, plus obviously 401k, uh, health insurance, dental, you know, all that kind of stuff. You have to throw that in as well. Now, some people could say, well, that's a lot of money. Um, it isn't because you know, being a pilot, in, in particularly if you're responsible for a flight department, is a bit like being a dentist or a doctor in that, and and so the salaries need to be up there. Unfortunately, over the last 25, 30 years, salaries have kind of stayed the same, um, and it's only recently because of COVID and that, and lots of pilots retiring, that basically the salaries have started to increase. With the airlines leading the game by increasing salaries, some airlines even by 20 percent. So obviously, what's been happening is they've been doing that. A lot of guys flying the private jets have moved on to the airlines. So the private jet people are without pilots. And so if you are thinking of buying an aircraft, you really want to attract a good experienced pilot, but you also want to keep them. And so that really is important. Now, uh, other salaries, um, just to give you an idea, I was talking to a friend the other day. He's uh, just got hired to fly a G550. Um, he was originally Royal Air Force. Then he um, went to fly a Global Express. And now he's uh, flying this G550. They paid for his tight rating. Uh, he has a green card for the United States. So he moved over to the United States because in the UK, they were offering jobs at 150,000 a year, dollars. That was the maximum he was being offered. Um, and he came to America and he's been offered 230,000 plus 401k and all the other bits. And he gets to freelance every month, at least four or five days and at two and a half thousand dollars a day. So, um, you know, you can top up your salary really nicely uh, on the freelance market. Uh, pilots that are rated on the Global 7500 or Goldstream G700, they can command as much as three and a half thousand dollars a day. Um, so that's really good for the, for the pilots. But of course, there aren't many of those airplanes around, so there aren't many experienced pilots on those types. And so that's why they, they, they can command that kind of money. Now, um, so salary is really, really important. And, and this is another thing when you are chartering a private jet um, and you're trying to go on the cheap, you then need to ask yourself the question, well, how much is the pilot sitting up front actually being paid? Because, you know, I don't want someone, you know, I'm paying a lot of money for this private jet flight. And I talk about this in my book, The Quantum Economy, where I basically tell you the story, you know, the cost of flying private is 15 times more than flying first class. But the safety record is 10 times worse, more or less, 9.2 actually. Um, so when you're paying 15 times more money wouldn't you want somebody up front that's maybe been paid 250 300,000 instead of maybe 80,000 because some of the salaries here are really low um i mean of course they are lower on the smaller aircraft i mean we're talking you know captains on a beach 400 low 60,000 high 75,000 because they're smaller aircraft but at the end of the day in particular if you're buying your own airplane and you're going to have your own flight department you want to attract people that are good, people that are professional, uh, get them, you know, give them a good budget for their training 
uh, pay them good money, good, give them time off, give them benefits. I, mean, I don't know if you have a company that makes kitchens, give them a free kitchen after maybe two years they've been with the company, you know, incentives and things like that. And I know a friend of mine, he um, has been flying for 25, 26 years now. For Silvio Berlusconi, who just passed away, who is a former prime minister of Italy, uh, also uh, the president of AC Milan Football Club and the president of Mediaset, which is a large company in Italy. And some of us gone, he's used private jets all his life uh, to build his business. And this friend of mine, Walter, he's been flying for him for 25, 26 years now. Um, and he's never left. Uh, when he joined, he was thinking of maybe joining the airline one day. I actually interviewed with them uh, just before Walter got the job. Um, and I got, I was that close from getting the job. But I guess they figured that, you know, for me, it was going to be a two, three year stint until I had enough hours to join the airlines. So they, they, they reverted on to another candidate. Uh, but at least, you know, I had had the privilege of, of having that interview and getting that close, getting the job. Then they, they chose another guy who had a bit more experience than me and was more sold on the whole private jet thing than me. I was more airline oriented. I wanted to get that experience in the airlines, basically. So uh, the reason why my friend Walter has been with this company so long is because they've always given him 10 days off a month. And they've always planned the 10 days in advance and they've always stuck to that. So they've never, you know, called him on his day off or whatever. So he's managed to, you know, get married, raise a family, be home with the kids, but also have a flying career and stay with the company all those years. They've increased the salary every year. They've given them him benefits and, and whatnot. Um, and so he's been better off staying with uh, Silvio Berlusconi's flight department, which is called Alba Servizi, um, then, uh, for example, going off and flying for the airlines, and then maybe the airline goes bust, and then he has to change, and this and that and the other. Um, so, you know, if you get the right people, uh, as I always say, always hire the right man or woman, and um, then train them to be the pilot. Like in the case of this, this guy that, that flies the G550, he did not have Gulfstream experience. Um, he flew other types, but because he was the right man for the job, the company were willing to pay for his rating. And that's a, a really good investment to make. I mean, maybe it's sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000. But, you know, that person will be grateful and they'll probably stay because you've chosen the right man for the job. Um, and then you've trained him to, to fly that airplane. Because at the end of the day, if someone can fly a Global 6000, they can fly a G550. If someone can fly a 737, they can fly a, a Falcon 7X. Uh, I mean, once you've, you've done the bigger airplanes, they're all kind of very similar. I mean, they have their differences, don't get me wrong, you do need to be trained. But once you're used to managing a large airplane and getting into a smaller one or a similar one, uh, the transition is a lot easier. It's always your first big jet, which is the, the big hurdle to overcome for every pilot. Uh, but once you get over that hurdle and you you know you get that airplane into your system, then the next airplane is a lot easier to do. So that's important for you to understand as, as you're thinking about buying a private jet or leasing a private jet. Um, you know, and, and how much you're going to pay the pilots. You need to pay them well. And as I said, up to 320, I do hear people getting paid even 350,000 uh, a year as a captain. Um, and I think that's that's a good number to start if you want to attract the good people and keep them. Uh, you put 350 on the table plus the benefits. I mean, they're, they're going to come, they're going to stay. Now, and don't start thinking, oh, but this is a lot of money. But if you're going to spend 20 million on a jet, what's 350,000? Think of it as this guy's running one of your companies you know, a $20 million company. How much would you pay a CEO of a $20 million company? So that's the way you've got to think. And if you do it that way, you'll get the right people. So that's really, really important. Now, if you haven't got yourself a copy of the Quantum Economy, I just remind you, get yourself a copy, just 170 pages, quick read, and click on the link below for that. And if you want to talk to me and uh, do a one-to-one -one consultation, uh, I mostly buy aircraft for people, so I represent you. So um, you do a deal with me and I'll go out to the market and what's off market and find the right deal for you. And maybe it's a lease, maybe charter, whatever. But it's important that we have a one-to-one -one conversation just so I can understand more about your needs. And uh, that's it from me on this episode of Budget TV. Remember to check out this video here about the Citation M2 owner. Uh, he's interesting. Um, pilot uh, but also technologist into AI and he's had a parallel career as a pilot and as a software and AI engineer and so you can hear from him and what he has to say and he talks about uh, his view on single pilot aircraft if it's coming to the airlines and so I encourage you to check that one out and that's all from Fabrizio Poli here on Business TV and I'll see you on the next one.